Greetings, greetings, greetings. So, um, I'm going to try to do this real quick. So I'm trying to consolidate this down into a short, short video. So, this is a recap of uh, Sir William McRae's Sunday Night Live. That video was nearly four hours long. I think in another video I said it was five hours, but it was actually nearly four hours long, um, which is a half a day's work. Um, so I have already went over most of the first part of the video in another video. Go check out the video if you haven't already. I did a live called uh, William Responds to Earl Carter. Um, so I, that's where I addressed uh, that he um, responded to whether or not he got put out that funeral at the funeral and the funeral being a lot of people in the comments or a few not a lot a couple of people in the comments asked me what funeral was I referring to I was referring to Bishop John Sheard uh, funeral Bishop John Sheard um, is uh, a well-known uh, bishop in the Kojic um, body he is uh, Karen Clark Shields Sheard's um, brother-in-law uh, what's her child's name I forgot her daughter's name. Oh, wow. But anyway, uh, that's who uh, Bishop John Sheard is. Uh, Kiki. Kiara. Kiki uh, Sheard's grandfather. That's the funeral that we're referring to. And um, and uh, so I did a video alive, you know, where Earl Carter said that he was put out or asked to leave. William said that he wasn't asked to leave. Um, he said that uh, a white guy, I guess that was working security named Jerry came, approached him and asked him, did he have uh, floor seats or seats on the floor? He told the guy, yes. And the guy said, you know, you can't record. You, it's better for you to record in the balcony. Um, that was the story, according to William. Uh, I don't know. You know, William, William ain't always honest about things. So. Um, in this four hour video, of course, he starts out addressing the trolls and, uh, he starts looking up people to try to see if he can see their pictures so that he can come, uh, you know, make comments on them. Um, and you know, then he goes on to say, uh, that he doesn't follow any other, um, uh, social media influencer, any other vlogger, you know, any other YouTuber, any other person who do lives on Facebook. He said he doesn't watch them because he's the originator and all of that. And he don't have to mention their name that he don't mention their name. and He don't have to mention their name. And then he goes on to talk about Earl Carter. But y'all, <clears throat> I don't know whether y'all subscribe to Earl or not, but y'all need to mosey on over there to Earl Carter page because he has responded to William. He's, he, he is yet still talking about, oh, Willie, Earl Carter ain't playing with Willie. And what's funny is, is that, um, as some of you already know, uh, William used to drive for um, Earl Carter and his wife. I guess at the conventions and, and the convocations and things, um, he would drive for them. So they used to be a time when they actually, I guess, liked each other, was okay with each other. But now, mm -mm, not now. Um, William called him motor, motor oil. And, and, and William called him all types of names. And in response... He called William all types of names. So go over there and check out the latest. He just recently did a video. Uh, thank you to all of you who sent it to me um, over on Instagram. If y'all ever want to send me anything, I'm on, it's, it's fine. I like it. I welcome it. It's uh, over on Instagram. <clears throat> just look up Miss Cruiser. That's my name over on Instagram. So check me out over there and you can send me uh, private messages if you like to. Send me some tea. Y'all get some tea. Send it to me. Let me know what's going on, what I'm missing. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, go check out Earl Carter, Bishop Earl Carter. He's responding. And uh, so in this video, William's still yet talking trash about him. And I, I think I played some of that for y'all. So, um, but again, he said he wasn't put out. And again, that's in the go check out the, the, the other video I did. I'm not going to cover that again on this. So let me skip all that in it because I had that in my initial notes. But then I said, mm -mm, I'm going to do a separate video to talk about that. Um, so William still saying that Earl is a disgrace to the Kojic church and that he's on a ventilator with the Kojic church. 
you know, he's he just going in on Earl, but Earl goes in. Earl Carter, that is. Let me call him by his full name now and be respectful because I should. He, you know, I have no reason not to. I don't know Earl Carter, y'all. So, but anyway, let's move on in the notes. Let's move on. Uh, I'm going to move on all past that. Check out. He William went back to 2013 to revisit 2013. And then he turned around and told us to remove from it. His revisit of 2013 was him rewriting history. And then he started saying that y'all need to move on from it. He said, then he starts threatening to tell stuff and divulge texts and messages and screenshots. If he's pushed, he said, if I'm pushed, I still got this stuff in my phone and I still tell it and show it and, and let y'all and play it. So he's still in his fees about Detroit, evidently. Um, and he said, let all that go. But he don't he, he haven't seemed to let it go. Now, in this four hour live, he is all over the place. It is. And I'm going to blame him for, you know, not staying focused and, and paying too much attention to the comments. And I'm going I'm to blame his audience in the comments because in the comments, they was talking about everything but what we want to talk about. Um, so he was all over the place. If he had any notes, he certainly wasn't sticking to it. He wanted to talk about the trial, um, but he never started out by saying which trial. He kept saying, well, first topic, I want to talk about the trial. But then he kept being distracted by the trolls and distracted by the conversation they was having in, in the comments. And um, then he got into a conversation about Denise Clark Bradford's son passing. Um, her One of her sons passed. Um, but it's been about a couple of weeks or more ago. And in the comments, they were talking about um, that she needed donations to for his services to bury him, I guess. And so they got distracted with talking about that. Then he started talking about the election and the late uh, Bishop Sheard's seat being filled and who was running. Um, Demario, I think that's how you pronounce his name, uh, King Jives, was in the comments talking about Kojic politics. Of course, that's something that King Jives is also... Um, interested in talking about he was an elder in the Kojic church he's still the elder I don't think that he's in the Kojic body anymore but he is still um an elder so go check out King Jives King Jives for a little while was doing these inspirational short videos I was really enjoying them he kind of stopped excuse me I had to drink take a sip of water I got dry mouth this morning I don't know what's going on with me I think it's me having to run this heat but anyway um, I was enjoying them and then I think, I don't think he's doing them anymore, but anyway, so go check out King Jives. He was in the, he was in the comments also. And after about 15 minutes of Kojic politics, he starts talking about Cal Rittenhouse, um, and how, um, he was acquitted. Um, he starts, talks about how, uh, Trump, you know, have met with the young man, as you can see there on the picture. And, um, Trump. Uh, told Fox News uh, Sean Hannity that the trial was prosecutor misconduct. So uh, William talked about that for a while. And he showed this, this particular, I think either this picture or another picture of, of Trump and, and Cal. And he wanted to know how we felt about that, how the people in the comments, his audience, how uh, they felt about this picture and, you know, Trump, you know, being in support of this, of this guy. I guess if I had to answer that, I would say, you know, of course, you know, it's it's upsetting that uh, the young man wasn't convicted. Um, and I will never get used to and be OK with injustice. Um, but and I will all, always uh, uh, participate in politics. I will always uh, vote. I will always uh, participate in community um, uh, events and things in trying to help, but I will not let it make me bitter. I'm not going to let it make me bitter. So that's how I feel about it. Y'all can drop down in the comments and let and say how y'all feel about it. But William, you know, want to have he want to have a, a serious conversation about it. But again, he gets distracted by someone sharing Denise uh, Clark's, or I think her last name now is Bradford. I don't think she go by Denise Bradford. 
somebody shared her cash app. Like y'all remember, I told y'all early that that they were taking up uh, money for her son's, I guess, memorial service. So somebody shared her cash app. I said something about her cash app, and of course, William snapped. <laughs> William said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, no. Only his cash app should be shared, and only he should be given money." He said he is the only cause that they should give money to and support. That's what William said. So back to kind of to about the the Cal Rittenhouse trial and him talking about it. While he was talking about uh all of that, they weren't paying him any attention in the audience. They was continuously talking about uh Denise Clark Bradford and the Kojic Church. And then talking to each other <laughs> and picking at each other and there were some trolls. So it was like William really didn't have any kind of control over his audience. They were, really wasn't paying attention to his topics or him. And uh, pre- that's pretty much how the four hours went. So he moved on to Pastor Burnett Robinson. Did y'all see the story about this uh, Seven Day of Venice uh, pastor who made these comments that you see on the screen in, in the title of the of the, the article that is showing? Um, and he was kicked out for making those remarks. I didn't see the video. I just heard about it. And um, so he talked about that for a while, which sparked the conversation about women submitting to their husbands. And if women submit and should they submit and how they submit. Now, William is slick enough, even though William, anytime William, y'all know women, William talk trash about women all the time. And, you know, he would be the type that's all for what we see on the screen, anything that would hurt a woman. And, you know, of course, he'd be all for it. But, of course, he was smart enough to, not to come out and say it, you know. But he talked around it saying, you know, well, you know, is he right? You know, what are y'all opinion on that? Should a woman submit? What if a, a man wants to be intimate with his wife and she doesn't feel like it? Uh, you know, is, is it is it? violation try not to say that word so i can keep my video green rather than yellow um you know he was like you know is that a part of submitting listen listen y'all we got to study to show ourselves approved and we and whenever you go anywhere whether it be your own pastor or another pastor it is not wrong for you to check behind what they preaching because ain't nobody always right. I was married to a preacher for many, many years. It would have been 30 years this past October had we been together. Um, and I used to often tell him throughout the years, sir, your mouth ain't the Bible. I used to, I, 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 you know, when he starts telling me stuff like, like he, like he was written in stone and he was right. That used to be the thing I would tell him. Your mouth is not the Bible. And, and, and the words coming off your tongue ain't always the scripture. So you got to look things up for yourself. And submission is not a four-letter word like you like this article says is saying here on the screen. It's not a four-letter word, meaning it's not a bad thing. Because the scripture says to love your wives. Wives, submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. But it also goes on to say, and husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church. If 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 a husband is loving his wife as Christ loved the church, it ain't no problem to submitting to him. None. Because he ain't going to do nothing to hurt you. If he loving you like Christ loved the church, he ain't going to never do anything to hurt you. It ain't going to be none of this. Ain't going to be none of that. Because he love you. So that ain't even, that shouldn't even come up as a, as an issue at all it just it really shouldn't but anyway just a little opinion from miss cruiser unsolicited opinion from uh miss cruiser where am i at in my notes i don't lost i don't lost focus myself so william keep trying to return to the trial talking about the trial and he's wanting to have a very serious conversation uh, about it and then i have another picture after that yeah, I just go with this right here. Um, he's you could tell that he's wanting to have a very serious conversation, but he's too distracted uh, to do it. He's in my opinion, William is too unorganized, too distracted, too unstable to ever take on any serious conversations. 
So he's wanting to have a, a conversation about black folks operating from a place of inferiority. He says that he's he's bothered by it and he wants to examine it. He said, listen, examine that. Um, he compared how black people, thank God, if they get an Academy reward or award, whichever word it is, or any type of accolades, you know, he he talked about how, you know, black people go right into saying, oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Things like that. He says, while white people start thanking their staff and their families and things like that. And he feels like that makes us black people that's his argument to why he feels like we 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 have this uh image of inferiority or feel inferior to white people i guess um what else did he use i didn't write really write it in my notes but uh in other words he he was saying his argument was is that we don't I guess he feel like we don't give ourselves enough credit that we, you know, studied or we went to school or we actually did a good job or we did our skill that we go right to thanking God. And he has a problem with that. And that that's a that's kind of I don't know. That's kind of odd to me. You know, he claims to be an elder, he claims to be a minister, he, you know, he claims to be a preacher and all of that. But he have a problem with thanking God. He see that as being inferior. So, and the thing that's kind of really funny with me with him saying that is that William constantly compares what's right or how to do things with how white people do it. Like, for example, um, he'll say, like, for example, one time some, he was talking about uh, using Cash App and, and um, he, he was saying that somebody said that using Cash App was ghetto. And he said, when I was, you know, at the celebration for the Braves winning, I saw white people out there steadily using Cash App. So does that make it right? You know, you know, he's saying we're inferior. Uh, we have an inferior mentality. Uh, but yet he he's comparing to what how things should be done to how white people do it. So who's inferior, us or the dude begging for money <laughs> who's also black? But anyway, before I start rambling on about that, let me get back to my notes. But let me say this. Um, I don't think, you know, acknowledging God and thanking God for any time, anything um, like for any any success or goals that I met. I don't think me thanking God makes me inferior. I don't think that it makes me take away any credit from myself. I just feel like that we as a people need God because everything is not, a, we don't live in a fair world. He also said that um, saying that somebody have white privilege is having a, a, a mentality of being inferior. It's like, really? Really admitting to something that we have to face as black people every day? I mean, it's obvious is being inferior. It to me is not really being inferior It's facing your obstacles It's facing those things that could possibly hindering you. It's like, OK, this is something I know that's going to be, you know, something I'm going to have to get over to get to my goal. So that doesn't mean I'm inferior. That means I know it's there. I know it's one of those things that I'm going to have to get around. Um William shouldn't call anybody inferior, really. I mean, anyway, let me let me move on. He did mention he he did this in mentioning, and I think the reason why he brought that up is because of some of the uh, coverage that he saw. What trial was that? Um, on the Ahmad Aubrey verdict. Um, I think that he you know was a little upset that people you know was saying thank God that you know that the verdict came out the way that it did. But again, as I said before, you know, with with the injustice and, and inequality that we face, then, yeah, right along with, you know, having our ducks in a row and having our evidence and, and doing everything the way we should, should do it. Then, yeah, we better pray for the favor of God. <laughs> we better pray that God, you know, for God to move, because 
this world ain't fair. This world we live in is not fair. It's not always just. It's not always equal, you know. But anyway, I just found it funny that he had a he had a whole conversation about that. You know, that and then turn around and was begging for money from those of us, he say, that are inferior. So I put having my notes They actually ask y'all those who watch the video. Did you agree with William? Did you agree with his opinion about us? Because it was actually some people in the comments that was agreeing with him. I was like, wow, does the Bible not say in all things give thanks? But now if we give thanks. We are inferior. But anyway, let me let me get off that because I feel like I'm rambling. So let me move on. And if any of you say I am rambling, you was rambling. I'm going to block you. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. I might, though. Anyway, let me get back to my notes before I lose my place here. I need to get to work and like uh, I got to go. to I got to clock in for working about eight minutes. So. um, So, like I said before, you know, William think if if white folks do something, it makes it right. And if they. uh. And if we do it differently from them, then it makes it wrong. Um, he, he he sounding like in this whole thing that all our examples of what how we should handle things should be our examples should be white folks basically. So at this point, his numbers starts dropping, and he acknowledges it. He said, "Oh, oh, my numbers going down. Y'all leaving? Y'all leaving? Yeah, folks were like, look, I ain't here to hear this foolishness from him." Um. Let me move on in my notes because I lost myself in my notes because I did exactly what I said William wasn't doing, got distracted and moved away from my notes. So William goes into a long spiel asking for money. Um, beyond his, he said he need for people to start helping him beyond just buying the merchandise. He needs for people to send money, cash app him. He said he needs his help. He needs your help. He needs for you to buy merchandise, but he needs you to go beyond that. And he, he needs for you to donate, donate, donate. He said he has secure an opportunity. Um, he has, he said he has an opportunity to, to secure a studio. So y'all, he, he has this studio that he's looking at. According to William, this is his reasoning for saying that, that folks need to give money beyond buy, just buying his merchandise. So he's finally given a reason of why, Folks should donate to him because it sure is free for him to uh, jump on and do a Facebook live. Facebook is free. His Wi-Fi comes along with his room rate down there at the resident inn. Um, so it ain't no cost to what he's doing. So I guess in order to get y'all or get people to send money, he had to put a cost to it. So now he's saying that he has this building um, that it's a studio that comes with equipment, a camera, a green screen and lights. And he wants to be in this place before the new year uh, comes in and that he needs people's donations in order to do it. But y'all, whatever happened to his event that he was going to have in Houston? That was supposed to be in October and November. That never went on. And whatever happened to y'all? Y'all remember when he used to go down to that, that radio and he used to do a radio show? Do he still do that show? If he still do it. He's, he sure don't talk about it anymore. Sorry about the background no noise. I'm having to drink some water. I got dry mouth, y'all. But um, he, he don't do his show anymore. So he's never consistent with anything. He'll start something, do it for a little while, stop. Start something, do it for a little while. So now he's claiming that he wants to do get this studio with the that comes with all the equipment that he needs. Um, but here's the thing. If you donate it, donate to it. And if it's, there's really a studio that he's really looking at, will he be consistent enough to maintain it? Someone asked him to show it. You know, they were like, let us see it. Maybe that'll motivate people to give you uh, let us see it. And he said he ain't going to show it due to the haters. Um, and at that point, somebody in the comments uh, called him a scammer. You know, of course, he had to go on and get upset about that being called a scammer. But he said he's not going to show the studio in advance because of the haters. And somebody, I guess somebody will try to, I don't know, go get it out from under him, get it before him. I don't know. But he said he's not going to show it for that reason. So after the begathon, he goes back to talking about the election and tried to get Bishop Jordan and Shouting Gale on. 
and he spent a lot of time i mean a lot of his video um uh, is spent on trying to add bishop jordan um uh, william says he does not have they were trying to get him to bring him on by um stream yard but william said he doesn't have stream yard and even if he did have stream yard he don't know how to use it so if he gets this studio and all this equipment who's going to teach him how to use it that's the other thing at, at some point i think he should take some type of class or something or get some type of teaching where he sit down and actually learn let somebody teach him some stuff on on you know using Streamyard, um how to use uh actual social medias that pays how to get even andrew Andrew Codwell, which we're going to talk about later. Andrew Codwell allowed people to tell him how to get monetized, how to get monetized on Instagram. If you go on Instagram, he have pop-up ads. He even have little things you can click on and, and, and donate money to him on Instagram. He's monetized, I think, still on Facebook. That was the first social media he got monetized on. And he's monetized on YouTube. So, William, you call Andrew the little, y'all know the word he used, boy, the, the derogatory term. But it sounds like, to, and Andrew have su successfully launched a merch. Um, uh, he has a link for his merch where he's selling merch successfully. William, you sound like the slow one in this whole beef between you and Andrew. Anyway. So he just said he don't have StreamYard. So he was trying to get, he wanted uh, Bishop Jordan to, you know, click on Facebook where it says you can join the chat so he can add them on. And they was having a lot of technical issues with that. Um, they had a lot of technical issues with that. So finally, when he got them, got them on. Y'all, I didn't even know there was a book. They went so deep into talking about Kojic politics and the Constitution and all that, that they broke out the manual. William told him to check page 13 of the manual or the book. Y'all ain't even know there was actually a book, an official Kojic manual. Listen, I ain't mad at Kojic. <laughs> um, so they broke out the book, uh, and this is, you know, just showing y'all. I guess y'all, those of you who are members of the Coach Church, y'all already knew there was. I didn't know. Um, according to Bishop Jordan, William is still an elder in the Coach Church. Those were Bishop Jordan words, not mine. And and William said, "Say it again." What did you just, just say? He said, "Yeah, yeah, you're you're still an elder in, in the Coach Church." But I thought that I saw a letter where he was where he was scripted. From being his license was scripted from the Kojic Church, but Bishop Jordan says that he's still the elder in the Kojic Church. While talking to Bishop uh, Jordan, Williams started uh, back on Earl Carter. Oh, my notes told me to go to a minute mark, so hopefully I can get there because I wasn't prepared for that. Uh, it says go to the minute mark on YouTube. Y'all hold on. Um, let me see if I can find that. I, I didn't. I didn't realize I had it in my notes. To uh, for y'all to actually listen to it. Oh God, I'm gonna be late for work, but I like y'all, so I'll be late for work because I like y'all. Um, let me see if I can find it. Hope I got the right video. Let's see. And it says the 131. Now, those of you who are members, those of you who are members, can see this video in full. Um, go on my community tab. It's there. And also, or, let me see, or, you know, it, you should see it through just membership. By you being a member, you should see the full video. Y'all, to be a member, it costs $1.99. $1.99 per month. And you can be a member. Not per video, but per month. Let me see. Hold on. Y'all, give me a minute. 131 mark, 53 second. I ain't going to be able to get it just right with my fat fingers. So we'll start, we'll start about here. I really try to be fair, although I know I'm a blogger and I don't really have to, you know, look at your side. 
But I try to look at the other person's side. I try to be objective, even when I have trolls talking about me. I try to be objective and try to at least, you know, and not just ramroad with, 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 you know, like, a, like ignorant motor oil, uh, black, ugly uh, right. Earl Carter. I don't try to just, you know, you know, just come off ignorant and stupid and just because I'm, you know, because I told them, I said, you know, you're black and evil. My grandmother told me dark-skinned people were evil and you're evil. You know, to say I got put out of that film with your black, ugly self. And the only reason saw, why you saying anything good about told the person. Me, told me that he said that. Told, stupid, told and the only reason why he changed, the no, but the only reason why he changed his tune is because Drew gave him some money when Beverly died. Okay, so Williams accused uh, Earl Carter of blackmailing folk and some other stuff, and then he started in on Larry Shaw. Let me see if I can find that minute mark where he starts in on Larry Sh on Larry Shaw. Hold on. Poor Bishop Jordan. You could tell he was he was he was a little, you know, uncomfortable when when William got started. But hey, he have to know. He said he's William friend, so he have to know who William is and what William do and how William carry on. So uh it is so hard to get to the right minute mark when you have chubby, chubby little fingers. He had a, and he had a baby by the girl that worked at Wendy's that was going to his that was going to hold his on. Let me go back it up just a little bit more. Mama to bring her over. Okay, let's start there. Earl, you talking about <laughs> Earl is a liar. He said he got he mother Elizabeth Crones. He blackmailed her, made her pay him ten thousand dollars. He made Detroit Williams pay him ten thousand dollars. I said, I'm not giving you no money. I'm not giving you a dime. Anybody <laughs> give him some money. He a hoe. He, he's a whore. He he goes to the highest bidder. He talked about Bishop she daddy she had like a dog. And went and took his black ugly tail and sat in Drew's church and buried his daddy, knowing the stuff that he said. And then that sleaze bag, Larry Shaw, he went in there. He had a, and he had a baby by the girl that worked at Wendy's that was going to his that was going to his church and was paying her mama to bring her over to his house so he could screw her. Don't tell me. Wendy's has very good nuggets. <laughs> nuggets so. Bishop didn't know what to say. He said, "When he had this." Was like in a nugget, and baby, I call, I call the <laughs> defects. I call Georgia defects, and told them that he told them that that nigga had a bastard, and that girl had had doo dooed out a whole bastard for a bishop. Mother Lucy and all of them was so nervous. Yeah, Ooh, McCray, don't do that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it, look, and then go. And the, here. I'm trying to bring the help. But they back. said the they back. could go in. They could go to the funeral. And ain't nobody said nothing about them being at the funeral. They want to talk about me. <laughs> he gonna talk about me, and he said, "But you know, I did ask being somebody. Bought, I, did, being, I, did, I did. I did ask somebody, William. I said, how important does William have to be for you to notice him in a crowd?" Of over two thousand people, <laughs> is the, why would you even be noticing what's behind? Baby, what it when I show up, it is like E. F. Hutton. It is okay. In answer to your question, Bishop Jordan. So Bishop Jordan asked oh, William, "Was there any way of resolving this conflict between he and Earl Carter?" And William, in trying to give an answer, start rambling you know how he loved to rap, ramble and say um 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 uh in his answer and basically he really didn't answer he just somehow brought up 
Ernest Pugh. Somehow he can always get Ernest Pugh in there. I don't know why. What is your issue with Ernest Pugh, William? But he started bringing up Ernest Pugh and some accusations. And when he did that, poor Jordan, <laughs> Bishop Jordan, he was like, look, Ernest is my friend, you know, and he, he, by the, at that point he starts getting uncomfortable again. Look, Mr. Jordan, you're going to lose good friends and some acquaintances and hopefully not church members messing around with that William, you know, because William, William is not for anybody but himself. He does not care. You know, you may be his friend, but is he your friend? You may have his best interest at heart, but do he, does he have your best interest at heart? But anyway, uh, then he started in on this guy. Y'all know who that is. And by the way, this guy dresses better than, than, than William. And if it seems like I just kind of, if there seemed like there was a, a break in my commentary somewhere, it was, uh, right as I was playing the video or playing the audio of the conversation between Bishop Jordan and William, I got a phone call and I had to stop. And that was this morning about nine o'clock. And it is now 4.30 and I'm just now able to get back to finishing up this video to upload in this commentary. So if it seemed like there was a break in time, there was. Um, so just being transparent with that. But anyway, this guy dresses better than William, by the way. And William, in answering uh, Bishop Jordan's question, what will it take for y'all to make up? Can y'all resolve? William went into this history of the day that the Kojic Church will never forget. And that's the day of Andrew when he went up there with the church and he was delivered and I don't I'm not gay anymore and I like women 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 women's you know already plural but he put an extra s and a z on there um and and as y'all remember if y'all could think back in the history that after that occurred with Andrew Cardwell then uh Bishop Carter Earl Carter did that sermon uh, which brought division between himself and the Kojic body. Um, it said that they escorted his wife out of the church, um, which, you know, I'm sure was awful for her. But obviously William is extremely bitter at a lot of people, and he said he will never <laughs> forgive them. William said he will never forgive them even if it keeps him out of heaven. He feels that strongly about it. And we all know that he can't stand this young man right here. Do I have a, let me see. Yeah, here it is. Let's, let's hear him. Let's hear what he says in his own words about uh, Mr. Andrew Codwell. Let's take a ride back down memory lane. Let's go down memory lane since so much history is being brought up lately a lot of history so let's, let's is everybody on. in bed who's all there and y'all like andrew y'all like that old crazy fool and had him he had a complete and total nervous breakdown on stage don't make any sense. A I had and then he gonna he had that cheap. I did not know that ugly Andrew Caldwell was that fat and had that big old stomach and then gonna lie had that cheap polyester rented thing on uh, rented tuxedo jacket on looked like some looked like something that you would have got from a uh from a a, a, a a rental place and it was too little pulling on that gut on that horrible stomach that he had and he gonna lie he gonna lie and say that he had on time for it was a shame and a disgrace before God and man that he would lie and say that he had on time for that boy no he didn't have on and had them terrible looking shoes on looking like a fool and Kim Kim Strong Kim Strong and uh she been lying to me. I asked her when we was out there, did she fly that boy out there? Did she fly that fool Andrew Caldwell out there to uh out there to Vegas? And she gonna tell me that that was a negative. It was not a negative. 
out there. I'm over here at the stove waiting on these folks to come out of this stuff, come out of this door. All these preachers that came to town. Uh, Bishop Ellis and them is in town. Golf. Now you look at you look at me. Y'all see how I dress? It's gonna have somebody. Actually, Andrew dresses better than you. And as I mentioned, I think earlier in the video, I think I mentioned it because y'all, I did the first part nine o'clock this morning. And now I'm doing the second part, four thirty in the afternoon. But Andrew dressed better than you. Andrew got all his stuff monetized on three different social medias. Andrew got merch, and his merch is, is doing pretty good, and his website looked good. And did I mention Andrew dressed better than you? Anyway. Oh, something. And then the girl, the girl is standing up there. I don't know who that girl was with all that, that red wig on and all them Shirley Temple curls. She's standing up there. And the boy, who sits a microphone on the floor? Who sits a mic? Who gonna sit a... And he doing all the... Right. And then acting a fool. And the girl, she's standing up there. She's Kim Strong. Who is Kim Strong, guy? Oh, God. Oh. And later... Oh. safe to say that he really don't like Andrew. Andrew is, is, is one of the people he don't like you, boo. He don't, he know, he don't like you. <laughs> I'm at his house. <laughs> Y'all remember he went to his house. Let me move on. Let me move on. Cause it's, I don't want this video to go a whole, whole hour long. Okay. So if you want to look at anything that I talked about tonight, y'all, by the way, uh, uh, I'm going to get back to that. The two, uh, well, it's two parts. The four hour video, again, is under my membership. How do you join my membership? Just hit that join button. Um, pay $1.99 a month and you will be a member of my channel. Um, if you want to see any videos in full, um, a lot of times they'll tell me what video they want to see and I try to get it up, up under the membership. And there is also a picture. Now, members, go look at, always look at the community tab, members. I put some extra stuff up there for y'all, just for the members. There's some little extra stuff. I might have, I might have a picture of William and his daddy on the on the on the community wall for y'all members. Go check it out. Go check it out. So let me get back to my notes so I can wrap this video up. Um, and yeah, I already covered that. So Bishop Jordan was trying so hard, in my opinion, to sway the conversation back to something a little more productive, but William was not having it. William was trying to get messier. He was like, let me show you this Jack, this Jack picture, this Jack out picture of this guy and this guy. And, and you could tell he was like, look, I don't want to do it. You know, I'm not trying to go there. Um, he was trying to speak about deliverance and, and, po and start trying to speak positive. And like I said, William wasn't having, he was even trying to tell a story about an incident in his church of a guy where some unfortunate things happened to him. And I guess he was going to get to how the guy was delivered and how we can't uh, automatically judge people because we don't know what they've been through. William wasn't having that. He didn't get to get ha halfway through the story. I wanted to hear the whole thing. But of course, William interrupted him with some mean gossip and some accusations and trying to tell, give some gossip about some other people. I'm sure that the people who cared for Bishop Jordan wanted him off that panel. I'm sure Shout and Gail probably wanted him down off that panel. Whoever Bishop Jordan's wife is probably wanted him off that panel. I wanted him off that panel. As it says here, bad company corrupts good character, Bishop Jordan. Um, I know that you, um, like William, you said that he's your friend and all that, but 
and I can't tell a grown man what to do. And I could be wrong, but I don't know. I don't think that William have your best interest because he did. He wouldn't, you know, try to, you know, go into other people and say some of the things that he knows that makes you uncomfortable. He wouldn't do that with you being on the panel. Um, and I just didn't see him respecting you. But that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. So the video ended with uh, uh, Bishop Jordan praying after he did all of that stuff. He said, you want to pray? You want to pray us out? And Bishop Jordan, the look on his face was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a pray. <laughs> and he did a good prayer. It was a very encouraging prayer. And then... Uh, then he went off the screen, you know, and then uh, William reminded his uh, viewers and followers to send him donations, that he need those donations. Remember for the studio with the lights and the cameras and the green screens and all this stuff that he don't know how to use. Uh, he, he, he need to get in there before he say before the new year. Um, and then he told, and then the last thing he said in the video was sh to share the video. He said, share it in groups. So guess what I'm doing? Y'all are a group. I'm sharing his video in groups. In a recap, that is. Or you can get it in the membership. Membership is a group, too. So go check out the membership if you want to see all of all four hours of this video that I recap. And I hope I didn't leave out anything because, again, um, I'm having to merge these two videos <laughs> together so I can make it one. So they can appear like one when I upload it. Life happens, y'all. Right in the midst of me doing videos, life happens. But anyway... I think I got all, all the information that I wanted to, to get out on the recap of, of Sunday Night Live this past Sunday. What what was Sunday's date? What was Sunday's date? Uh, November 28th, uh, Sunday Night Live. Four-hour live on Facebook. That's the recap. So, before I start rambling like uh, William, because I think that's everything. I was trying to go through my mind to make sure that was every, everything. And it is. Yeah, it is. Cause that, so... Don't forget, if you want to see things that beyond the recaps that I do, full videos of certain things, certain pictures that I find that I'm, may be interesting, sometimes even the members ask me to put up certain things. And um, if I can find it, um, I can't put up everything. Like, I can't put up any of Earl Carter's videos because Earl Carter is a content creator on YouTube. So for me to put up his videos, uh, I, that's not something that's allowed. Uh, but anything that is in the public domain, um, I am able to put behind the membership. So within reason, if you ask me to put it up and I can find it within reason, then I will add it to the membership. Okay. This is Miss Cruiser 2. Please like, share, and um, subscribe. And we can all take this advice. advice. Y'all, I'm so tongue-tied. We can all take this advice. Bad company corrupts good character.